Hello, and welcome to Focus on Design with Hunter Industries. You know, remote control valves are the heartbeat of an irrigation system, uh, opening and closing to allow flow to the different emission devices that deliver water to targeted areas in the landscape. As important as these components are to an irrigation system, you know, they are often misunderstood, regularly m misplaced in irrigation design, and later forgotten but after the landscape has, has established. I'm Bryce Cornell with Hunter Industries, and joining us today is Jake Lott with LandEffects. He's the leader of their irrigation usage support team. Jake, can't thank you enough for being here with us today. I'm sure that you see a ton of irrigation designs, and I assume you feel a ton of questions regarding remote control valves. Yeah, I'm hoping that you can share a few of the best design practices that you've seen, and maybe a few recommendations for clear and concise, accurate irrigation design. Well, thanks, Bryce, for having me, and you are absolutely correct. I've seen all kinds of design work and have been asked all kinds of questions about remote control valves, so uh, where do you want to start? Well, maybe we should start with something basic. What about, uh, like, symbols? What can you share about symbols used for uh, representing remote control valves? Well, I think before we actually talk about the symbols, it's important to address that there are several different types of remote control valves. So inline, angle valves, anti-siphon, drip control zone kits uh, that might be installed with a filter or pressure regulator, just to name a few of really the ones we see the most. So when we think about the graphics of an irrigation plant and the symbols used, we do need to keep it simple, easy, legible for that estimator or that contractor when they're installing. So these patterns are ubiquitous with remote control valve association. So whether it's the circles with the cross hatch patterns um, or for some of the remote control valves or for our drip control valves kits that they're more of that square pattern, you know, we really need to have a way to consider these symbols to differentiate um, whether it's the drip zone, anti-siphon, remote control valve, just to, to name a few. So it really is good practice to include that remote control valve kit, uh, sorry, remote control valve tag call out on the drawing as well so that it can actually share information about that valve. So as you see here, we have a lot of different valve call out styles and really from a best practice standpoint um, to be able to show things like the valve number, size, the estimated flows, any of that kind of information that we can share with a contractor to help with that installation really is important. So notice though that these valve tags actually line up or co coincide uh, with the or associate with the type of remote control valve that we're actually referencing. Yeah, uh, those are some really good tips, and I'm sure, like you said, estimators and installing contractors appreciate that too, so they can you know, see the see the plan and read it very clearly. Uh, what about remote control valve placement? Where should we, we be locating remote control valves throughout an, an irrigation design? So, you know, remote control valves are always associated and attached to that irrigation main line. So the irrigation main line is often drawn diagrammatically on a plan, meaning that that main line has been drawn or has the potential of being drawn in a location that's legible, but not necessarily where it's intended to be installed in reality. So you can see where that confusion uh, might occur when that remote control valve is shown in an area that's not intended to be installed. So we do try to add additional notes onto plans uh, where needed, but as you're looking through you know, the plan itself and seeing where we're dropping things, you might actually have you know, this main line installed in the right area, but it also would be nice to note if you fell into an area that might fall right outside of maybe a landscape area. So. Um, that's why we do like to add those notes. So we like to graphically place the valves where they're intended to be installed. So you can see how we might have clusters of valves through the, the project here in different areas because those valves are trying to, you know, be grouped close together as intended to be installed and, 
and feeding those specific areas. And maybe we show that extension of the main line to where the area really is going to be done. So other things to think about is when we're grouping those valves together, creating those manifolds how we place those valves appropriately so they are close to those areas like I was talking about and really spacing on those valves along the main line to reduce that pressure loss in a system so uh, there, there really are several things to think about and but just make sure that as you're placing those valves in an area where they're safe from site use conditions but still accessible for maintenance purposes so one thing we also like to do here at Land Effects is actually create a color reference for that irrigated area associated to those specific valves. This helps for drafting and design purposes and also can be used in the system as as-builds, but it's really clear uh, to see as we move through this where each zone is really designated to go and it's easy for the contractor to see that as well. Yeah, that looks like a, a, a pretty good tool there. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, and what about legends? You know, what kind of information should we associate with remote control valves in an irrigation legend? Yeah, so, you know, the legend really should consist of that information. If we're going to come over to our legend here on the plan, um, needed for that contractor to purchase the correct product stuff. So if we're looking here, you can see that we've got our valve model and any kind of information associated to that valve to help that contractor purchase contractor to purchase the right stuff so the equipment size the add-on features whether or not it's going to have a remote control uh, valve box around it uh, what size that's going to be and any other supporting information uh, on equipment as well but as you can see here, we also have listed a detail, and that legend really doesn't share the whole story, and this is where the detail comes into play. So that detail is the vital piece of information that really communicates that proper installation technique to the contractor to show um, what that valve or that equipment is going to actually, and how it's actually going to be installed, so what fittings, uh, how it's going to be connected to the main line, what fittings and components we want to see, the contractor to purchase, the position of that equipment within the valve box, any clearance and distances between that equipment, and really anything else. You know, that detail is really your opportunity to be as clear and concise as you possibly can be and how you want that contractor to install that piece of equipment. Yeah, that's that's great information there, Jake. You, I can't thank you enough for sharing all these considerations for us when we're working with remote control valves. I, you know, again, we often neglect to remember the importance of these inconspicuous components for our systems and how best to represent them. But you know, your suggestions of sharing clear and legible symbols, a concise placement and location communication, accurate legend information, and a thorough detail are all really good things for us to remember to incorporate into our next uh, our next irrigation project. Uh, Jake, again, thank you so much. And My thank pleasure. you all for joining us as we focus on design with Hunter Industries. Thanks.